What are the benefits of impulse spending? In this episode, we're talking about the benefits of impulse spending, what they are, how to determine impulse spending versus habitual smart money decisions. Okay, so let's do this. Welcome back to another episode on the Your Money, Your Life podcast. Last week, we talked about why impulse spending is bad. This week, we're talking about the benefits of impulse spending, okay? Because like we talked about last week, there are benefits of impulse spending and we should be doing that. So impulse spending and our mindset. If we're not impulse spending like we should be, then our mindset is being sabotaged. So when we impulse spend, like we've talked about, you create that positive money association because when we create this association that if we work really hard, we make a lot of money, like it's going to be hard and then it's not fun. We don't get to do anything with it. There's no positive correlation there. And we want to keep doing the things like, okay, we're human. We don't want to do hard things. Like some of us, yes, we know like, okay, we have to do these things because it's required of us. And there's some sort of negative consequence if we don't. But when you flip that over and you do things because you know there's a positive outcome, it is so much more, so much more. That's really great grammar up there, Amy. It's way better for you in your relationship and you're going to see better results because you're not playing so much mind games and you're looking forward to something. We want to keep doing what we're looking forward to, which is why we need to impulse spend. The other reason that we need to impulse spend is we want our income to grow, right? That is actually going to be a large focus for us in Q1, towards the end of Q1 for this year. We're going to be doing a lot. We're going to be doing a lot of work to help you grow your income. Because I know, I've heard time and time again, that's what you want to do, right? We put together the Money Magnifier Toolkit last year. If you joined us inside the Academy, you've got access to that. This year, we're, I'm really going to dive into it. So make sure that you're subscribed, we're connected so that you can get all the details because that's coming. Okay. But as your income grows, you're going to be able to scale how much you get to spend. So you get to go do more fun stuff. All right. Those are the benefits, right? Because when we have that positive money mindset and that relationship, you want to do more of the things that you know you need to do and you don't dread it. That's the key, okay? This episode of the Your Money, Your Life podcast is brought to you by Impulse Spending Like a Pro, the right way series. Ready to learn the right way to impulse spend? Because not all impulse spending is bad. Then this video series might be just for you. Inside of these videos, you'll learn what impulse spending is, the right way to impulse spend, what you need to keep, what you need to ditch, and how to put it all together so that you can impulse spend the right way. To check out the Impulse Spending Like a Pro series and step into unstoppable finances that works for you, your money, your life, simply text IMPULSE to 817-969-4653 or visit amycircacom forward slash impulse. And of course, if you need that link again, it's hanging out in the show notes for you. Now, the second thing I want to make sure we covered today is we have to determine impulse spending versus a smart money decision, okay? We talked about the 24-hour rule last week, but it bears repeating because it's such a powerful tool. So when you utilize the 24-hour rule, if you have something that you want to buy that you did not already plan, this is not groceries, um, this is like, oh, I want to go buy that new whatever it is, and we're going to go on a clothes shopping trip, okay, and you're going to spend more than $100, Mm, that one's a little iffy. It's really supposed to be one item. Okay. We'll say a hundred dollars. You set the limit. So if it, money is tighter and it needs to be $50, then make it be $50. Okay. But we'll say the hundred dollars. So hundred dollar limit, you have something and that's like really awesome. You want to buy it. It's just what you want, just what you need. Okay. But you had not already set the intention that that's what you wanted to buy and you were waiting for it to go on sale. So it doesn't matter if it's on sale if you hadn't already picked this thing out, right? You need to wait 24 hours before you make that purchase, okay? Because you're going to be able to wait and see if it's an impulse spend or if it's something you actually need and want, okay? There's a difference. How many times have we bought things that we don't just love? Um, I think it is in, it's not facing the giants. It's another football movie. Oh, darn. 
What is the name of that movie? They adopt this teenager. Teen- it's based off a true story. They adopt this teenager and he is with them and they're clothes shopping. It's the mom and the teenage boy and they're clothes shopping. And she says there in the store, she's like, if you don't love it here, like you're not going to like it at home. Crap. I really wish I could remember that name of the movie. Okay. If you know what movie I'm talking about, um, it's the football movie. They adopt the kid. Like he wasn't really great. Like they put him on the football team and then they show, like he really becomes amazing. He goes to the college team. It's based off a true story. If you know what I'm talking about, please send me a message because I'm like, racking my brain right now i cannot remember what this movie is called but anyways she says when they're in the clothing store like if you don't love it here you're not gonna like it at home and that is like so true okay because we always love things the most when we're at the store because there's excitement about buying it now if you wait once you wait the 24 hour 24 hours because we're talking about the 24 hour rule still once you wait the 24 hours if it's something that you still want then you're still going to want it and then you can go get it as long as you actually had the money in the play account, which we talked briefly about the play account again last week with why is impulse spending bad. The play account is a part of your budget that you utilize. It's again, we're using percentage-based budgeting, but it's the percentage of the budget that you utilize to go have fun. It's a requirement. You have to go have fun. So When you determine that this is a smart money decision, you've waited the 24 hours, you've determined it's something that you actually want, and you have money in the play account. Like those are the key three key things. Now within the play account, you're going to have your money to blow. And if you're married, your spouse has their own blow money as well. That's yours to go do whatever you want with it legally, morally, and ethically. There's no, like, because typically one of us is wanting to save the money and one of us wants to spend. And having those sub accounts that you take the money out, so the other one like, really doesn't even have to see how much money is in, in that account or in that fund, however you want to set it up, then like it, it solves so many problems. Marriages are saved, all the things, okay? Um, that's really it for today, okay? So the benefits of impulse spending, like we've talked about, is that positive money relationship. And I don't think that I've been able to stress the importance of getting that part right. When you dread something, you're not going to attract more of it. And yes, we have to go out there and do the work, but we are also very powerful in the words that we say, our thoughts that we think, like that is all very powerful as well. There's a balance there. And I actually, that's one of the things that my clients come to me and tell me is like, I have the balance there between the practicality and the woo stuff. Okay. So your money relationship is so critical. We have to think positively about money if we want to move forward. Okay. That makes it scalable. And then we talked about, you have to follow the 24 hour rule. You, then you'll be able to know if it's something you actually want. And if you're making a smaller impulse purchase, uh, just stop and ask yourself like, okay, am I buying this because this is something that I want? Or am I feeling a really high, really crazy emotion? And this is just like a stress release moment. And if it is stress release moment, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Okay. You can still give into those sometimes. And again, the last thing we have to check is if you have the money in the play account. Now your challenge for today, I want you to go access the impulse spending like a pro video series to be able to take this to the next level, because there's so many gurus out there that are telling you like, uh, no spend challenges, all these things. And I want you to have the right solid foundations that are going to last. Okay. We're at the end of January. I want a month, two months for now. I don't want you to be falling off the bandwagon because you went too hardcore at something that it didn't stick. Okay. Impulse spending like a pro video series. That is your challenge for today. I want you to access that. Okay. And if you went through it with us last year, go access it again. Like we can go through it again. Repetition is key. Okay. So to grab that, text me impulse to 817-969-4653 or simply visit amycirca.com forward slash impulse. Of course, you know, I've got all the links for you in the show notes if you missed it or if you're driving. So With that, we'll see you next week on the Your Money, Your Life podcast. Bye for now. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Your Money, Your Life podcast. Wondering what's next? When you're ready, there are different levels of support that you can use on the path to creating unstoppable finances and your unstoppable life. After all, your finances are unique and your support should be too. Ultimately, we'll create a customized plan to ditch financial struggle for good that works for you, your goals, your priorities, your life. Go to workwithamy.com to get started with one of our most popular programs, or you can book a Q&A call with me and we'll figure out what your next step should be.